Thank you all for your testimony. And now we turn to uh, members from the, for the second panel. Uh, questions for them, and uh, I recognize myself for five minutes. Admiral Van, uh, the Maritime Transportation System Security Act was approved by Congress in 2002. At the time, there was physical problems, and uh, the, those were looked into. Now uh, we have cyber problems, and do you think the um, the uh, Coast Guard has the right authority and so forth in striking a balance between cyber and physical threats? Chairman Webster, uh, I'll, I'll uh, take a, an attempt to answer your question and then uh, maybe ask my, my colleague here who, who's really, uh, this is his area of expertise. But uh, to your point, clearly uh, cyber threats and the risks of, of cyber attack have increased over time with the advance of technology, particularly in the uh, port environment with the uh, implementation of automation and, and uh, various uh, software products, uh, operational technology to increase the efficiency of our ports. What comes with that are increased vulnerabilities uh, and, uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, attack vectors. Uh, our authorities, uh, which will be bolstered uh, by the, the current uh, rulemaking effort, uh, are, are currently adequate for our team's abilities to assist port partners in addressing risks and responding to attacks. Uh, I will uh, I'll defer to uh, Admiral Argwin to uh, add to the Ar answer. Argwin, do, do you have something to add to that? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, so uh, to answer your question uh, directly, the Marine Transportation Security Act uh, did support or did solve a particular problem when initially um, uh, enacted and focus primarily on physical security. However, the evolving threats um, that have been brought about with the cyber domain, um, we are evolving those same authorities. We can use that same structure. Uh, and our, our proposed rulemaking really does focus on uh, evolving the, the requirements that we are putting in place through those baseline cybersecurity requirements to address the emerging threats that cyber uh, places. So I would say that we are good on the physical side with, uh, with MTSA evolving to incorporate um, vulnerability closing uh, actions underneath MTSA is still appropriate. Yes, sir. So were, were there more that you might need for the, um, for the uh, cyber part of that as far as uh, the Coast Guard needing more authority for port safety and so forth, do you think? Mr. Chairman, I would say that the framework, the structural framework, that system that was put in place underneath uh, the MTSA is adequate. The authorities that we have underneath the Capital Port Authorities to be able to address those emerging threats is adequate. We need to build out the specifics, which is where the notice to propose rulemaking really does focus on setting that baseline. But the cyber, the cyber challenge really is an evolving challenge that we're going to have to be nimble and flexible as new vulnerabilities are identified. But I feel very confident that the structure and the system that's in place underneath MTSA is adequate for the purposes of addressing those vulnerabilities. So Rear Admiral Van, uh, in February, the President signed an executive order to strengthen cybersecurity in the maritime domain. Uh, the Coast Guard has historically been uh, uh, sometimes slow to respond to uh, rule, doing executive orders and rulemaking and so forth. For example, we spent a decade trying to execute rules for the Atlantic uh, Coast port access routes. Cybersecurity is rapidly developing. Do you think uh, that uh, the Coast Guard will have the speed to put together what's needed in order to do that? Or do you, are they going to adopt a slower, spe slower speed? Mr. Chairman, the, uh, the executive order uh, clarified captain of the port authorities to respond to cyber threats and attacks uh, immediately as soon as it was instituted. Uh, as you know, sir, that same day, uh, the Coast Guard released a, a maritime security directive that specifically addressed the assessment of vulnerabilities in uh, foreign-made ship-to-shore cranes. So again, that was an immediate response. And then uh, that same week was the notice of proposed rulemaking, which, to your point, sir, there is a process that plays out. We are in the public comment period 
and the Coast Guard encourages uh, industry and, and port partners to take advantage of the opportunity to provide feedback on the draft uh, regulations that have been uh, put forward through that rulemaking process. So mo moving with haste, sir. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Carbajal.